course for them. In fact, this idea came from our principal, Dr. Nina Panandikar, and ma'am is also there uh, today for the session. So uh, she proposed this idea of having an audit course on entrepreneurship idea to start up for our ESL students. And uh, this course is designed in consultation with FIRE, Mr. Prashant. And uh, we have designed a course for them for three years. So for uh, this also is a part of their session. And that is the reason why we have around 42 students who belong to ESL in, for this session. Another thing is we also have Institution Innovation Council, which is formed under MHRB MIC. That is MHRB has Innovation Council and we are a part of that. And uh, we have a lot of sessions where we are asked to organize by MHRB MIC for our students, future entrepreneurs. So this session also is a part of that, which comes under quarter three. So these are the two things. So therefore, this session is a very important session. And I now, Nina ma'am, would you like to say something? Nina ma'am? Hello? Hello? Yes ma'am. Yes, ma yes, thank you, Avila. A very warm welcome to Mr. Ronak Kamath. Thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, I'm thank very you, sure this session uh, would, be, yeah, would be indeed a valuable one for our students. So I'll try yes, to deliver our you. best and keep it interesting. Yes. Thanks a lot. It would be the best. It would be the best. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me over. Thank you, Nina, ma'am. Uh, Ruthwick? Ruthwick? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Ruthwick, I would like you to introduce the speaker for today. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We have Mr. Rauna Kamath as our speaker for today's workshop on prototype process design and development prototyping. He completed his Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering from Goa College of Engineering and Master of Design from Indian Institute of Science and was also the best topper for the same with the CGPA of 9.0. He has designed and developed many products. Of them, one is Mobile Biomass Briquetting Unit. It was the design for producing alternative sources of fuel from plant waste, which was funded by NABARD in the year 2014 and 15, and was the first of its kind in Goa. Also, he has developed automated mechanical cardio pulmonary resuscitation device for the Indian basic life support ambulances to reduce cognitive load and fatigue on emergency medicine technicians during the cardiac emergency cases. For diabetic patients, he has developed a design which speeds up the healing of chronic ulcer caused due to diabetic complications. He has a work experience of more than five years, of which two years are at Electronic Relays India Private Limited as a consultant. And now he runs his own startup, Controsense Private Limited. So without any further delay, I request our speaker, Mr. Rauna Kamat, to start with the session. Thank you, Ruthwick. So I'll take over from here. And uh, I think it's a great initiative by Don Bosco College to have this session for the students right from the first year. And the whole concept of having an ESL and students participate in it. I think it will be a good contribution to the students and also will get them on track earlier on and give them information about what other opportunities are there apart from going for a corporate job. So let's begin with today's session on prototyping. So I'll start the presentation. OK, so let's talk about prototyping. So there's a saying that uh, just something that I liked and I wanted to mention. When the project starts, you're already over budget and behind schedule. Well, in most of the cases, to at least in the projects that I worked on. So it's just something that I like that I wanted to mention. So coming to the product development process. So before we get to prototyping, we need to discuss a little bit about the product development process. Because all the individual processes within this larger scope are interrelated. And it's an iterative process where you have to keep going back and improving your designs and your points, and also improving your design to finally meet the actual requirement of the customer. So if you see in any 
industry which is a, a design firm a design industry a product oriented company which is into manufacturing products you would have what they follow is called new a new product development so this is the whole cycle which involves a very broad range of uh, topics well it starts off at the management level deciding to introduce a new product into the market say you have a company you can take an example of any company say vip a bag manufacturer so they decide to introduce a new type of bag and the management says okay come on there's a new opportunity in the market you want to introduce a new bag let's study the market let's see what the requirement is let's do the financial analysis let's see if we have the capabilities to meet that new design and meet the requirement in the market let's see how much profit we can make from introducing a new design now finally at the end of the day the goal of uh, you know every product is to solve a particular problem so new product development generally consists of the full process and all the sub processes involved so under new product development you have design thinking then you have embodiment design and after embodiment design you move over to production which is the end of the new product development process and where does prototyping fit into this whole uh, you know scheme and all these processes that are interlinked to each other so prototyping generally comes in this region where you have the design thinking which has moved over to a certain uh, has progressed to a certain amount and you've cleared out what you're designing for what are the requirements that you're trying to fulfill and what are the parameters that you need to meet and satisfy and then it also encompasses embodiment design what is embodiment design it is basically giving final form dimensions and parametric design to the concepts that you have developed through design thinking we will cover each of these topics in the next few slides so moving on to new product development so what is new product development and what are the individual stages that are part of it so the initial stage on the left hand side you can see is idea generation like i mentioned if we have a product company uh, which is into developing new products they'll be in a particular segment so they will analyze a segment and they will have their needs to introduce a new product to increase profits or when they see a gap in the market and a good opportunity they will take a decision to introduce a new product so what they will do is start a brainstorming session amongst the top level management you have product managers you have the ceo and all these people will sit together and generally ideate so they list out all the possible ideas that they can about new products what the what market gap is there how they can meet it what kind of product they can introduce what are the capabilities that are available so these will this initial stage of idea generation will be a very broad you know uh, brainstorming session and generally during brainstorming sessions you are not supposed to restrict your thinking it's okay if anyone gives a crazy idea it's crazy ideas are welcome during idea generation and brainstorming because you never know a good solution might come out from one of the crazy ideas so moving on the next step is idea screening so out of all the the whole list of ideas that will come out of idea generation you will obviously have to cut down on some of them and narrow your scope down to the ones that you can seriously take forward so in this stage where you have the idea screening the whole team will sit down and analyze each idea they will remove the ones which are not suitable and list out the ones which are favorable and continue so what they will do in idea screening is also compare each idea with the others so they'll have a relative importance given to each idea so they come to know which idea is ranked higher and they'll give a rank to each idea so after that they will come to us even smaller set of ideas which they can take forward to concept development and testing now in concept development and testing what they will do is generally they will generate concepts for these ideas and market and if you see the next two slide the next two points which is market strategy and business analysis and also product development so this is where you will have an iteration taking place between all these three sub topics so the market strategy and business analysis is where they will go out and study the market they will study the users the stakeholders and they will see what are the requirements and needs of these end users what problem it is that they are trying to fulfill and solve with this product which will be the universal selling point or the differentiating factor that will make this product popular 
from that they will generate ideas on how to solve this gap in the market and this opportunity that they have seen that will improve the concept and they will develop further concepts which they will take forward to product development where you actually give form shape size color finish to the concept and make a prototype and a first level product up till production level product so within product development you will refine the concept and take it all the way till a production ready prototype where you have all the production drawings and the specifications ready for uh, setting up the production line and starting production so initially once you start the initial batch of production which they will call a pilot production where you will have a few a lesser number of batches which will be doing testing in the market they will do something called market testing where they will have a limited release of these products in the market and they will have questionnaires and interviews with the users to get a feedback of the product whether the product has been accepted well by the market whether there are some problems with the market i mean the product and what changes are to be made if any so if there are any small minor changes then they can go always go back to the product development phase and improve the product in that field once it has passed market testing and the company has got the confidence that yes this is a product that the public needs it solves the valid problem and it has a good market which will bring them a good amount of revenue which converts to profits then they will go into market entry and commercialization where they go all out product into all out production where they manufacture in lakhs of units and release them through their supply chain throughout the country or the globe and they get it to every end user who they have targeted so this is the overview of the new product development cycle as you can see it encompasses a very broad range of topics now coming to one of the topics in new product development you have the design thinking process so once the company has taken a decision to introduce a new product or solve a particular problem if they have identified a problem which they have to solve then they will start the design thinking process where they will sit and brainstorm and try to come out with the most innovative answers or a set of innovative answers on how they can find a solution for this problem in the form of a product so let's say we have uh, if we can take any uh, you know problem that has to be solved so let's say bags vip coming back to the uh, you know bag manufacturer vip so let's say people are losing their bags in transit in uh, railways or at the airport so let's say there are a lot of cases and it's a problem for people and that's a problem that has been identified so what you would first do is do a stakeholder and habitat study plus a market study now who are stakeholders stakeholders are all the people who directly or indirectly come in contact with the product and these can be the final buyer who's going to buy the product it can be even the supplier who's going to or the warehouse person who's going to be holding the product it can even be the manufacturer who will be manufacturing the product and all these people need to be interviewed and need to be spoken to to get their feedback and know what their problems are what their requirements are and how they feel about this problem and you have to hear their side of the problem so coming next to the habitat question so what what is a habitat habitat is basically the environment in which the product will be used and the product will interact with the stakeholders so if you consider the first habitat where you have the let's say right right from the production of the product where you have the manufacturers right till the guy on the assembly line who is manufacturing each component and assembling it so the habitat would start that would be one habitat where in the manufacturing setting where you have the shop floor worker along with a component of the product then second you would have the transportation habitat which would include warehouses transportation trucks and all the people who are involved in that phase of transportation and then finally you would come to the primary user who is going to buy that product now what would be the final habitat of that that would be the end use of the product so with the bag it would be for storage and transport of goods uh, generally personal goods and what would be the habitat you know where a bag is used and how a person uses the bag so that would be the habitat of the bag in this case then you would also do a market study 
where you would study the whole market you would see your competitors who are your competitors in the market so you have if you're just saying vip bag you'll have american tourist with their products what is the pricing of their products how are their sales how is the perception of the public or the target user to their product what is it that their product cannot uh, you know provide that you see a gap in which you can add to your product and make it more competitive and better than their product what is the well materials also used in the product what is the technology behind that product so after you finish the first phase which is the stakeholder habitat and market study you would move on to the user requirements so once you've spoken to all the stakeholders you would list out all the requirements that each stakeholder has you would have primary secondary and tertiary stakeholder depending on how the person interacts with the product what you would do is then you would have the requirements and give each requirements an, an importance once you have the list of requirements you would move over to process flow and function structure so function structure and process flow is generally how you would go about using the process in its final use case so say a bag how would a person a end user say if i buy a bag a vip bag how would i use it so you would list out all the process flow well right from so uh, how would a person the end user yeah uh, i think there's some disturbance it would be uh, great if everyone could mute their mics the green step is get over it the jerus much you have to mute them because you are the most same question is usme lagao usme lagao nahi nahi usme usme प्रोसेस फ्लो और ये कलर सेम है फर्स्ट you would get it down you would rest it on its wheels or its uh, back face you would open the zip you would have your clothes or your contents that you want to put in placed inside then you would secure them inside and then close the bag you would pull out the handle for pulling the bag and you would take it along with you so these are su- just some of the well, just a brief process flow and when you study each step in the process flow it gives you an insight as to what part needs to be introduced on the bag when i say part i mean functionally and form wise so that a person can execute that process so say you have to pull out the bag from storage you will need a handle somewhere on the bag so the form or the functional part that you need is a handle then you need to open and close the bag so what is the functional part that is going to perform that function that is generally the zipper that is there on the bag then you need a handle which has to be comfortable for the person to pull the bag with you would have a telescopic handle on the bag and you also need to make it easy for the person to pull the bag over the floor with very little friction so you would have caster wheel on the base so once you have the process flow and you've had uh, you know the function structure also defined you would go on to brainstorming and concept generation now in brainstorming and concept generation you would sit down and you generally have it in a team where you would discuss as many ideas as possible for each function structure and process flow for each process step how can you solve that problem in the most innovative way so for example if you consider the bag you would have to close open and close the bag you generally have zippers but there could be other options also which you could use to open and close the bags 
So you could have some clamps also, which quick release clamps, or any other uh, locking mechanism which can be introduced. And generally in brainstorming, like I mentioned before, you try to get as crazy ideas as possible, which you later on narrow down into uh, viable ideas to take forward. Once you have a full set of ideas generated from brainstorming for each process flow, each function, then you move, you generate concepts by combining all these ideas that you've generated for each function structure or each process. Generally, concepts are to be, you need to generate more than three concepts. More the number of concepts, well, bigger is the well pool size that you can pick your product out of that you want to take forward. You evaluate each concept, so you have five concepts. You compare each concept with the other, and you will select the best concept out of all of them. Generally, you will have quantitative and qualitative methods, and it's done in a team again. And then you'll have one final selected concept, which you will take forward as a selected concept for the next step in the design process. So just another a nice diagram of the design thinking process, where you initially start by empathizing with the user, the stakeholder. Empathize is basically to understand what the other person is going through. In this case, it is the user. Not only the final user, but like I mentioned, the, secondary, the primary, secondary, and tertiary user. Then you will define what problems and requirements they have. You will ideate over those problems, find, come up with solutions through which you will generate prototypes, which you will further take for testing. And it is always an iterative process where from each step that you move forward, you can always move back when you face a problem. So in case during testing, you find a problem, then you can always go back to ideating and find a better way to solve the problem that originated from your initial design. Similarly, it, you can always go back to previous steps and refine your design. So after the design thinking process, where you have a selected concept, you would move over to the embodiment design process. So what is embodiment design? Embodiment design is giving final shape, form, dimension to the concept that you had selected. So what you would do in embodiment design is you would move on to product architecture. You would basically lay out the whole product system, product engineering would be done in embodiment design, where you would select the exact component which is supposed to perform that particular function or to meet the particular process that you had discussed in the previous uh, design thinking step. You would also do the design configuration, where you would uh, fix the relative locations of each component to each other, and also the interactions that they have with each other. How the components will be assembled together, what kind of fixtures are you going to use, are you going to rivet the components together, do you weld them together, do you stitch them together, do you use adhesive to put them together, and what is the spatial configuration of each component with respect to each other and the whole product. You also develop the parametric design, which is the final design with dimensions. And from there, once all these steps are done, you have the production plans ready, where you have a final production ready model with production plans and production drawings, which you can take forward to the series production step. So what is prototyping? So prototyping is a limited representation of a design that allows users to interact with it and to explore its suitability. So it's not a full finished product, but it's something that will give the user and the designer a good idea of what the final product will look like and how it will feel and function to a certain extent. It allows stakeholders to interact with the envisioned product and gain some experience of using and exploring the imagined uses. So a prototype is, if you're considering a product prototype, a physical product prototype, then you generally have a physical prototype which the user and the designer can interact with, hold in their hand, test it. Testing is a very important part of prototyping. And only after testing do you get validation and inputs to improve your product and design. So third point, so production of an intermediary product to be used as a basis for testing. And it aims to save on time and money. So you have an intermediary product. So you cannot directly go from design to production 
without having a prototyping cycle in between. You need an intermediary product, which will help you highlight the problems that you might face later and correct them before you invest money and time into production. So the aim of prototyping is to have something that can be tested with the real user. So if you have target users in mind, which you need to have, prototyping will help you get their feedback on your design, actual feedback that you can quantify and use to improve your design. So goals of prototyping, what are they? So prototyping is used to evaluate designs. So how do you evaluate them? Through exploring requirements. So once you have a form, physical form or physical prototype, it can be even a digital prototype, but nonetheless a prototype which someone can interact with, the target user and the designer can interact with. So there you can go over all the requirements that you had listed out. And you can evaluate whether you have met the requirement when the physical mock-up is ready. Choosing from alternatives. So you will have multiple prototypes that you can generate. So when you have multiple concepts, you can generate prototypes for each concept. And you can select from either one of them to take forward which one is the best after you do a comparative analysis. You can perform empirical usability testing where you can actually measure the performance of each prototype and see which one is better. A prototype allows you to measure and uh, give physical values, numerical values to certain parameters that we will not be able to do just in a virtual design phase or in a CAD model. And lastly, we come to evolutionary development. It aids in a iterative process to improve the design. So how do we prototype? So first you build a basic prototype, which has the basic functionality, especially the interface. Then you test the prototype that you have built and you find out where the flaws are and the design errors are. You list down the design errors and you move back to the design phase where you correct the errors and you again repeat the testing phase. So prototyping is an iterative process where you design, prototype, evaluate, find the problems, redesign, prototype again, evaluate again. Well, if the problem is big enough, then sometimes you might have to move from evaluation phase right back to the design phase to resolve this problem. So another way to look at the prototyping process. So what are the outcomes of each step in prototyping? So if you see initially, you will have to establish a prototype objectives. What would be the outcome of after you establish a prototype objective? What is the prototype? being designed for? Are you making a prototype for usability testing? Are you doing it for uh, functionality testing or you're doing it for uh, say load testing? So you would have a prototyping plan in mind based on what you're trying to achieve from the prototyping process. From there, you would be able to define the prototype functionality after you've done that, what the outcome would be is an outline of the whole prototype. You define the prototype further and exactly what it is that you would like to prototype. You would develop the prototype, the outcome of which would be an executable prototype. After you have an executable prototype in hand, you would take it for evaluation, where you would actually use the prototype for the objective that you had initially decided and also rate it and give an evaluation report. From the evaluation report, you can decide to either proceed forward if it performs satisfactorily or you go back to the design stage and improve the prototype. So coming to types of prototypes. Now there are different types of prototypes, but they're generally categorized based on how close they are to the final product function and appearance that you desire. So there is a term that we use in product development called fidelity. So it is a degree to which a prototype accurately represents the appearance and interaction of the final product. So you would have firstly the low fidelity prototypes. So what are low fidelity prototypes? The ones that are very rough and crude prototypes, which involves the use of basic models 
or very basic examples for initial product testing so the models might be incomplete they will not have most of the final properties that you need in your product and also they will be made out of very crude material or very basic material you can make them out of paper cardboard wood or even foam board these will generally just give a rough approximation of how the product will look how you can interact with the product but not a full uh, overview of how you can how it will be done in the final product so here are some examples of low fidelity product so you say you want to build a handheld device you can just use paper and tape and marker just to lay it out so that you get a good spatial idea of the spatial orientation of each component on the product how you would like it to be well you can start with a sketch and then move on to a basic 3d form like this which you can make out of cardboard paper or any other crude material this is another example now the importance of well you might think that this is just a very basic prototype but it's important to start with a basic form or a basic uh, low fidelity prototype is because you can start interacting with the product right away like i mentioned prototyping is an iterative process so even with the low fidelity prototype you will be able to figure out some issues in your design that you will need to go back and rework so it is better that you find out these problems in a low fidelity prototype which you do not have to invest much time and money into rather than investing into a high fidelity high end prototype and then realizing that you made a mistake because that can be costly in terms of time and money so here are some of the low fidelity prototypes i think you can recognize this vacuum cleaner this is from dyson company as you can see how they have moved from a low fidelity prototype to a higher fidelity prototype they have started out with basic cardboard forms with plastic tubes over it till they got the form right and the third form that you can see is a clay modeling prototype which is sort of a intermediary and then you can have the final high fidelity prototype which is made using advanced processes like additive manufacturing that is 3d printing and you might have vacuum molding and some other processes which would uh, give a much better finish and a much better finish and final product to, to which you can actually interact with it how you would with a final product so from there we come to high fidelity prototypes what are high fidelity prototypes so they are prototypes that look and operate closer to the final finished product so these would generally involve 3d plastic models with movable parts and would provide almost all the functionality that you would expect in the finished uh, product they use uh, manufacturing processes like 3d printing like i mentioned before to get a good amount of finish and tolerance and when you look at software uh, development also you can have high fidelity products in made with a good user interface and you have apps which are specific and software specifically designed for developing high fidelity prototypes so some examples of high fidelity prototypes over here so as you can see this is a speaker a bluetooth speaker or it can be a general speaker this is generally 3d printed and you fit all the functional components within the prototype you give it a nice nice coat of paint and finish so it looks like an injection molded piece but it's still a prototype but you can actually use it and evaluate its performance to certain extent here is another example of a pair of headphones which have been 3d printed so the high fidelity prototypes as you can see are very close to the final product and you can even use them just like a final product so here in this image we can see the whole process from starting off with a low fidelity prototype on the left and moving on to a high fidelity prototype on the right so you have the first prototype on the left made of cardboard which is a very basic model then you move to the second prototype which is of laser cut mdf or wood then you have a 3d printed prototype which gives you a much better feel and you can actually execute more functions in a 3d printed prototype compared to the cardboard and the wooden model and finally you come to the actual uh, final prototype which is the highest fidelity of them all which is a cnc milled aluminium prototype which will actually function like the final prototype final product which you intend to put into production so this allows you to evaluate the final product that you aim to put into production and at each stage of prototyping evaluation is critical so that you can always make changes to your design 
So another way to look at it, at low fidelity and high fidelity, there are two parts to it. So if you consider low fidelity, what would be the tangible or the physical prototype would be a cardboard mockup. Virtually, you would have just a rough sketch from which you would form the cardboard mockup. And high fidelity, virtually, you would work on a CAD model where you can really detail out a lot of aspects of the product. And then through 3D printing, you can convert your CAD models into physical forms that you can print out and actually test functionally. So just a flow of how you can go about, well, the steps of prototyping in a commercial scenario. Say if you have a client, so since uh, I come from the commercial side, this is generally what I would follow. And I would just like to mention it as a flow that I follow and well, this is how what I follow. So I'd like to convey it to you. This will be useful to developing prototypes. If any one of you all want to go into product development later on as a career. So what you would start off with is a design phase, first design phase, where the product, the person would come to you, a client would come to you and uh, come with a set of requirements. So you would start off by analyzing the problem. Like I mentioned, you do a stakeholder and user requirement study. You would also do a regulation and guideline study. So you need to keep in mind that every product that you design has to go into manufacturing and finally will be used by an end customer. So most of the countries have regulations for each kind of product which you have to meet so that the product is safe and can be sold in a particular country and a market. So I think if you if you see on products, you must have seen uh, stamps on them, markings like CE, BIS for India, or ISI. So these are all regulations that each product has to meet and they need to be studied so that you can consider what are the limitations and the limits of the parameters that you have to fall within, that your product has to fall within. And it is very important that you do this study in the early stage so that you do not end up designing something that will not get certified so that you cannot sell it in the market. Then you move on to the user flow. Like I mentioned, you would fix the user flow as to how the end user would go about using the particular product that you're developing. You'd move on to concept generation where you would develop multiple distinct con concepts based on the above research that you've conducted. You develop 3D CAD models of low fidelity for the concepts that we generated. Out of those CAD models, you would select three concepts and move forward through concept evaluation. So you would prototype the form of the concept. Now, if you have a 3D printer available, you can quickly just prototype the form where you just print out a general form of the prototype. You make a, we can make a low fidelity prototype at this process. Then you can perform a material and component study. So you can actually start studying the range of materials that you can play around with in the product. What are the characteristics of each material? Do they comply with the regulations that you had studied before? Then moving on, you would fix the device performance variables now based on the requirements that you get from user study and also the regulations. You need to fix a range of performance variables that are there. You need to fix the performance parameters. You need to give a value to each of the parameters that you have to meet. Then you would select one of the three concepts to move on. Now, what would be the output of the first design phase? So you would have uh, the user flow finalized where you would have fixed how the user will go about interacting with the product. You would have material selection done. You would have a range of materials from which you can select and take them forward. You would have the device performance parameter target list, a list of parameters and the target values which you have to meet for your